Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Future Friday. In today's episode, we're gonna take a look at Orbital Ring, the biggest architecture in space. So what is the idea? Idea is you simply want multiple points of, on a planet to be connected. Basically, let's say America, Europe, India, China, uh, Africa, everything you want to be connected. For that to happen, we need orbital ring. And not to mention this, the, re, uh, the reason why we call it ring, because it is a ring in space. Now, uh, why would you want to do this rather than space elevator? One simple reason. Space elevator is like a cargo truck carrying one container and orbital ring is equivalent of a giant container ship. Basically, the gap between a space elevator's throughput versus a, a orbital ring throughput is mind-boggling. Now, on top of that, let's talk about physics because anybody can come up with the idea. So what about the physics? Does physics allow? Short answer, yes, it is possible under known science. You guys are familiar with Saturn's ring. Now, be mindful. When I'm describing this, I'm describing an active structure. What does that mean? Basically, it's like a balloon which you are inflating. It will collapse the moment the power goes away. So if as long as you have, you have power, it's okay. The moment power goes, you did. So, uh, physics as you can see uh, Saturn has rings now this idea is very scalable basically if you want to make it for Mars you can make it you can you want to make it for moon you can make it you want to make it for earth you can make it for anything as far as a star is also possible as long as you have materials that can withstand the temperature so and how would it work in principle in physics it's basically like an induction motor basically contact lens magnet uh, transmission so this things whatever you are making your ring out of it has to be magnetic generally metal iron anything that is magnetic particle wise and uh, you will spin it so it will be in orbit and then you will clamp it around it same way you clamp a motor basically you have a rotor and you have a stator so stator would uh, you know uh, would be your orbital ring you won't be spinning with the orbital ring orbital ring is a static structure now ring systems wherever you have it in solar system or man-made like satellite orbits they are moving but you want a static structure so that's the physics of it. physics is uh, okay with it so how the heck it works now the idea is very simple it's a particle acceleration uh, in low earth orbit now if you have seen this particle uh, accelerator with a uh, large hadron collider think of it that way every time you accelerate something you get action equals reaction basically if you are accelerating something uh, that way you are getting acceleration and it will push you backwards very simple however uh, there is a concept when you are doing this in a circle things change a little bit action equals reaction is exactly the same it's just directions of them has changed so now imagine you have a ring basically a particle accelerator that is surrounding the planet so that particle accelerator is accelerating whatever it is inside it to a speed higher than orbital velocity as in uh, 24,000 to 28,000 kilometer per hour but it since you have a lot of added weight to the structure overall structure you need to be higher than that let's say 30,000 kilometer per hour now you might be like okay isn't that very fast these puppies can go upwards of light speed like almost light speed you can't reach light speed but these puppies go very close so we can do that this is within our technology and graphs so only difference would be this is working with very light elements we have to make it working with uh, magnetic elements which would be generally heavier so we will be compromising something so we don't need very high speed magical high speed and i am talking about low earth orbit so your orbital velocity is fixed you have to be traveling at let's say the particles in your particle etc has to be traveling at uh, 30,000 km per hour however if, because it's going straight it will have momentum the, the moment you change the direction basically the next particle etc that will curve it down because earth is a ring so every time you curve it down the ring will be pushed backwards this is the concept basically you can't make a ring that is you know static and strong enough to withstand on its own even carbon nanotube will not work and since it's not in tension it will fall apart and even if you somehow magically made a structure material that is strong enough to do that problem would be it will be unstable inherently unstable the moment even a micro meteoroid hits it it's, it's gonna start falling apart so for that reason this is the only way we can do it you will have material whatever it is something magnetic presumably traveling at very high speed now now wouldn't you be like uh, wouldn't my ring will start spinning backwards yes little bit but because most of the energy that is uh, you know applied to your ring the static part the stator would be in downwards direction basically you are fighting against gravity that's how you are staying in space basically above Karman line you want to build this around uh, below 500 km uh, kilometer because uh, that's below uh, Van Halen radiation belt so you will be safe and not to mention you still have enough of the atmosphere that very high velocity meteorites generally blow up in that 
place it will not hit you you still have some protection not only from radiation but also from meteorites so that's a very good place to build it and of course uh, the amount of material needed is also less because your circumference is small so when you have something like this uh, like orbit uh, saturn's ring think of it this way this is now magnetic and you are funneling it that's all you're doing it's particle accelerator now Again, your rotational will not be zero. You will still have some rotation. That's why you need tethers. Basically, this tethers will connect you to the ground. That's very awesome. Now, that tether is the interesting part. Because those tethers only are going upwards to 100 km if directly vertical, you won't make it vertical. You will always make it angle. So, you know, you can put it in tension. So, you are talking about 200 km. Now, 200 km is feasible with Kevlar very easily. Kevlar ropes can handle that kind of length. And the movie Battle Angel uh, Alita is coming. It has orbital ring. I'm not sure how much they're going to show it. They sh uh, if you watch the trailer, you will see... Uh, very thick cable but uh, when she cuts it open uh, there is a basically conduit below it you can think of it somewhere like that basically there will be pipes that will be holding up now you can travel in this pipe now this pipe will connect to the particle etc which is on uh, you know above atmosphere you can dome it over you want to do whatever you want to do however this is not in zero gravity the thing that is traveling in the ring which you are not touching you're not doing anything to it that is in orbit but you are not so if you jump from here let's say you are on top of particle accelerator and jump you will fall down basically you are simply building a very 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 tall structure which is above the atmosphere that's there is to it so if you dome over let's say you created a habitat there can you live there easily now, how, uh, will it feel, uh, how will it, you know, it feel to you? Basically, you will feel 88% light, 88% uh, of Earth's gravity. So you will feel a bit lighter, but everything else would be the same. This also solves the problem of zero gravity because zero gravity is lethal to humans. You want to be away from it. It looks cool, fancy and all that, but only fun for a small time. Uh, think of it this way all the astronauts in, in international space station they basically have to work two to three hours every day per day till they are in space their birthday gift is that that day they don't have to do that so understand that so idea is very simple you have like a saturn ring basically it will be replaced with man-made things and it will be magnetic you put basically orbital accelerators and then you will create the tether since tether is very small now this tether how far that can be basically if you are building it in equator depending on your material strength you can go upwards of usa but usa is a bit far so but you will never make it directly below a uh, basically equator directly below your structure you will not want to make that you always want to have a diagonal strength so you will have one going upwards above the equator one going below the equator that's where you will balance it out and how many tethers you can uh, create as many as you want as long as you can increase the speed or uh, mass of the material that is traveling inside uh, you good basically and let's say you maxed it out let's say your uh, particle accelerator is working at max capacity you don't want that you want it to be working at 80 percent or 90 percent capacity you never want it to be 100 percent because let's say one or two particle accelerator failed in the chain because you will have chain of this you will not have one singular you will have multiple accelerators you want to make sure that if one failed uh, the particles are not directly break the tube that will happen if you are putting way too much energy but you can build another of it basically two three four five six as many as you need and you will create a ring basically the ring will become a band and then band will become even thicker and you can carry a lot of materials to this basically i'm talking gigaton that's why i specify space elevator is barely like sending a container ship of course very cheaply uh, basically a container how much you can carry 50 ton 60 ton these puppy depending on that pipe that you are uh, using uh, you can use it to transfer electricity and you can also use it to transfer people with say uh, without any issue because two three hundred kilometers our railway can run that long even with a gradient like that it's very easy and very uh, cheap to do so a lot of people can get there and a lot of things can be done so then the question becomes okay let's say physics says it can be done let's say it's within our capability to do it uh, what would it need basically in terms of the idea of uh, orbital ring you have to understand space elevators are magic technology simply because we don't have anything that can withstand that kind of stress however in a particle accelerator orbital ring you have everything we need like right now if today humanity started we can do this however be aware of this the scale of this project i cannot convey to you i have provided the link down below to isaac arthur video you can check it out uh, but scale wise this is like um, making our uh, electrical infrastructure look like small electrical infrastructure on planet earth is the biggest machine out there and it will look like a puny machine compared to orbital ring so it is a super ginormous project 
however uh, it is doable with our current science current technology we know how to build particle etc we know how to build kevlar rope which military uses we know everything that we need to know in order to build this this is the funny part about it like this is much more uh, tangibly uh, you know approachable compared to every other thing so what will we gain like let's say humanity put all the effort money everything that it needs what will it gain basically it's train ticket to space that's it like it will literally reduce the price that down and you will not have g-force or high acceleration or like you know decompression or things of that nature of course you will have that once you are up there but since you you are much more flexible with your material budget you will have much thicker hulls basically your uh, habitat will be much more stronger and able to withstand much higher collision so you won't like you know be spaced so this whole planet would be connected because this ring is planet wide now what can that allow let's say you uh, from one point in the equator you took the train that goes to the orbital ring on the orbital ring you can travel as as high speed as possible because there is no atmospheric drag you can have a maglev system which will act like a hyperloop and you can travel as high speed as possible you don't need to create a tube around it you simply have a maglev and you can travel at 4000 or 8000 km per hour without any issue and then you will land on the other end so basically from whole planet is now connected and you can travel at very very high speed now, of course, ICBM still would be faster, but you can, uh, let's say ICBM takes 30 minutes to, from point A to point B, you can safely, comfortably make that to two hours. Basically, any point in the equator to a, another point in the equator, basically 180 degree apart, you can reach in two hours. Now, that's the maximum speed because maglev also has a limit. It can't go super fast because it will reach in orbit. So and that that's uh, you will also use maglev as a launcher because if you need to throw a satellite because i told you if you are on the ring you are like uh, basically on a very tall building you uh, jump out you will fall so you will have a maglev launching system to make sure that you can launch, uh, put satellite in higher orbits or big spacecraft launchers which you which will allow you to go to the moon on a one thousandth of the cost now this is the whole idea why we, we would even want to consider doing it simply because it can provide us clean power this structure, while big, while uh, enormous, does allow us to put a lot of solar panels. Now, solar panels on surface of the Earth is very good, but not that good, simply because even though you should get 12 hours of lighting, you rarely get 12 hours of it. And you, best case scenario, you only get five to six hours, and you hope there is no cloud or uh, dust storm or things of that nature. On space, not only you're getting much higher solar flux, you're also getting almost that 12 hours. And how much energy is there in space? A lot of it practically speaking uh, one square hectare can give you uh, one hectare can easily give you one megawatt on this you can easily have hundreds of hectares. now you might be like wouldn't that cast a shadow no same reason uh, aircraft does not cast a shadow this will also not cast a shadow and since you are connecting this to the ground you can easily distribute the power and this whole ring is connected so you can easily have a scenario even in night time you're getting power because the ring can transmit the power around. So that way, you, if you are writing a story about a world which has orbital ring, please make sure you don't show them world suffering for power. And in, I always, already told you, the core reason why you even wanna do this, because this makes space something that you just go there. You just go. Now you might like, wouldn't a normal cheap uh, rocket ship will do that? No, simply because if you try to launch that kind of rocket, so basically like let's say BFR, hundreds and thousands and thousands of BFR, you will roast the planet. Basically the amount of heat energy that will be generated on this uh, orbital ring, it will be minuscule compared to a rocket system. So flat out, a rocket cannot allow you to do that and not to mention G-forces, explosions and things of that nature. So this is the highest quality uh, concept we have and this can work. So let's say humanity for some reason figured it out and did that. What kind of impact we are talking about? This is on the same level as discovering fire. Like this will put space next to us. This would be something, oh, uh, you want to go to space? Like here's a train ticket, go. That's it, that's it, nothing fancier than that. You can go to the space. It will change our entire humanity for the better because A, we will be connected to each other. B, we will we'll kind of have clean power right now with current technology. C, because uh, now you are in space, you can build much larger structure which you, you can use to go to the moon or things of that nature. And that will allow you to do colonizing other planets much more easily, much more effectively. On top of that, the Physics of it is very simple. It's actually simpler than uh, space elevators. This makes our imagination meet the reality. Basically, this would 
it's an imaginary concept for many people but mathematically it's a, uh, very sound but it would be equivalent of our uh, you know rise from a first phone to our smartphone it's a completely different thing i cannot truly convey what kind of magnificence uh, you know ma majesty we will see the, it will be magical imagine just that you are seeing something that is in space and you can just take a train go uh, go through a tunnel and voila you are in space you can look down on earth you can have satellite disk that will allow satellite communication for all you won't have to worry about mobile towers anymore so there are many many things that can be done heck it could also allow us to cool the planet because cooling the planet has the bigger problem is where you're going to dump that excess heat now you have access to space you can have a radiator in space that will dump uh, vertical basically if you have equator like this your heat will go up and down not in the planet you can't fire it towards the sun simply because sun will blast it back uh, due to solar winds and nature. and on the other side you always will only get 12 hours so but if you uh, project the heat upwards in terms of north pole and south pole you can cool the planet because you can take away the excess heat and you can build many things like let's say optical fiber uh, manufacturing factories many things can be done there because you will have clean abundant power and anywhere on the like uh, imagine a uh, amazon delivery service Amazon Orbital delivering uh, your parcel anywhere on the planet in 20 minutes because it will have a warehouse in the orbit and uh, multiple places in the orbital ring and wherever it's closest it's just gonna send a very small drone it's just like just go with a cheap heat shield and just land it on your home anywhere anywhere on the planet basically fastest pizza delivery in theory so impact wise I cannot truly justify it like I have to go on a rant for one to two hours to justify it like what scale we are talking about here and this is why I truly hate science fiction it's like they rarely do justice to the things like uh, like I love the uh, TV show Expanse like it's one of my favorite uh, science fiction but they have nuclear power and they have water shortage in space in like you know in the place where everything is literally made out of water and they have water shortage i'm like dude we have 98 percent water recycling capability in current iss they can make it higher but we don't have enough energy to do that you have nuclear energy your people should not be starving for water again but that's the whole point it's like impact wise this can change everything and it's within our reason like it's something we can try to build and we will be able to build it it's much much more easier than space elevator So this was my presentation on orbital ring. I hope you liked it or learned from it. In that case, please go to the video description down below. That's even longer video than this, but you will get a much more precise understanding of it. And I would urge you uh, to uh, like that video and this video also. If you didn't like it, don't worry about it. You can dislike it. I would urge you to comment because I replied to all of them. Please subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.